I'd like to introduce you to Cecilia Gladwin, British Dressage Development Officer for Scotland. Cecilia, how long have you been Development Officer for Dressage? For six Scotland? years. Six years, quite a, quite a few years. Quite a few years, yeah. yes. So what changes in those six years have you seen? In I suppose dressage? the most marked difference would be in uh, you know the membership. Mm -hmm. When I first started, the membership was just over 200. And now we're up at 700, oh, which yes. doesn't, in itself doesn't sound a lot, but you know, it's quite a marked it's percentage increase, you know, because we're such a big area geographically. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the problems, isn't it? Oh, a major yeah. problem, you know. One exactly. week you're in uh, Orkney, and the next minute you're in the borders, Absolutely. you know. Yeah. So you've done quite a few miles. Oh, yes. <laughs> quite a lot of uh, miles, I'm yeah. afraid, yes. yes. You know, but it's important for the development of the sport. You know, um, it'd be easy to sort of just leave things to run on itself, but I still feel we're small enough that the need to see the BD image, mm -hmm. and that's what I sort of reflect, is. I am the BD image in Scotland. Absolutely. And I think if I can't be there to support them, then how can I expect volunteers to help me do the job? It's a lot of work on your part, there, and a lot of miles on the road. A lot of miles yes. on the road. And what about judges? Do you have a problem getting judges? Yes. Do you have enough? The judges... Um, uh, unfortunately, the judges are lagging a little bit behind at the moment. We could do with more trainee judges coming on. And how, what's the best way if somebody's interested in doing that? Well, really, the majority of people who ride, train, make good judges because they have an eye, they can see exactly what's mm -hmm. going on. And if anybody was at all interested, even just to make an initial contact, mm -hmm. to contact me, they can either get me on Cecilia Gladwin at BritishDressage.net or at 0777-811-4453 and every month in the Scottish and Northern Equestrian there is a BD column which is kindly sponsored by the Scottish and Northern Equestrian for which I thank Helen yeah. gratefully and uh, all dates for anything that we have going on in Scotland is published in that uh, report. Mm -hmm. So what would be involved in training to be a dressage judge? Say somebody who hasn't done any judging before What's the first thing that they would be required to do? Well, if they're sort of riding themselves, uh, one of the criteria is that they should be riding at affiliated. But by affiliated, it could just be novice level. Mm -hmm. And, they, you know, if they want to go forward and sort of think about it, it, it's really so simple. All they've got to do is like a, a small written paper and all the answers are in the BD rule book. Right. And then uh, they have to apply for uh, judge testing. They do practice judging. Mm -hmm. Uh, but having said that, for their own development, they are better to go out to as many competitions as they can. Practice judge, sit in with the judges. Because at the end of the day, even though they decide not to be a judge, the benefit to themselves, sit and listening to the judges. They learn. It, it, it's they a learn. lot to learn, and they can learn from watching themselves. So if there is anybody who is interested, yeah. please get in touch. Get in touch. <laughs> now, what about opportunities for the younger riders? Well, this week we've started a new uh, British Dressage Scottish Region Birds Rider Development Group. Now, Birds stands for Brit British Young Riders Dressage Scheme. And the idea behind that is so that we can identify potential talented riders. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily with the horses they have at present, mm -hmm. but, you know, they might go on to something bigger and better with the next horse. And we can help them in a pathway to get to a higher level. Mm -hmm. At the moment in Scotland we have a Sports Scotland C funded programme for which only there is funding for five riders. Mm -hmm. Now it isn't a lot. Yeah. At the moment I've got nearly 370 birds in my database and uh, so the idea is that if we can get this group up and running that would be a feeder group into the Sports Scotland development group mm -hmm. and then once this group's running there'll be like tail groups behind it mm -hmm. so it will be starting with them from the 11 and under fledglings and we've got a pathway and hopefully mm -hmm. be able to develop and identify mm -hmm. young riders for the future. And do they have to put their names forward for that or do you identify them as members anyway? Well for all of the training, birds and senior training, you do not have to be a member of BD to come forward. Mm -hmm. It's open to anyone. The only time that they're asked to join BD is if they're asked to represent the region, i.e. wear the Scottish flag, and then they have to be a member and the horse has to be registered. Right. Now, just to finish off, Cecilia, what would be your ambition for the future of dressage in Scotland? Oh, ideally, <laughs> I think I would love to have some list one judges. Uh, I would like to have our membership at a 1,000. 
that's a good uh, ambition. And I've set myself a target because I don't mind saying it, I'm 60 in two weeks' time. So by the time I'm 65, I would like to have some of these dreams come true. Absolutely. Well, let's <laughs> hope some of the viewers will help you to do that. Thank you all very much for coming today. Um, before we sort of do the final presentation, I would say I'd like you to join and say a very big thank you to Scottish and Northern Equestrian for sponsoring the championships, i.e. Helen Crichton. So thank you, Helen, for helping us. Very welcome. Very welcome. And then the next big thank you is to Cass, who isn't here, and her staff for putting all this together. She's behind oh, you. Oh. <laughs> She's behind you. No, because without Kaz and her staff here, there's absolutely no way you would have had the opportunity to come and compete in the championships today. So without further ado, we'll do the presentation. And the winner is uh, Sarah McKenzie on Ash 2. Well done. Thank you very well much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here's your rosette. Thank you. Your sheet and a rug. I hope it fits. Thank you. Thank you. And second, we've got Crystal Cunningham. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. And third, we've got Lorraine Young. We meet, we meet again. again. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank fourth, Kayleen Miller. Well done. Fifth is Louise Kay. And we have a sixth equal, and because it's a championship class, there's only one sixth reset, but we've got a snake one. So if uh, Alex Henderson and Rebecca Jenkinson come up, I'll put the resets behind my hand. <laughs> behind oh, your back, baby. So you want Rebecca? Oh, well, Rebecca, you get it because okay. no one needs tears. Uh, so it's Rebecca. Rebecca. There you go. Okay.
Hello, I would like to introduce you to Kaz, who is the organiser at uh, the Scottish National Equestrian Centre. Kaz, how long have you been in at SNEC, as we call it? I have been here since January the 18th, 2007, and the centre opened on the 1st of February 2007. So I've been here from day one. So how have you found it? Um, <laughs> it has its ups and downs, uh -huh. uh, but all in all, I, I love my job. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why I'm still here. And at the moment, or today, you've been organising our championships, the Scottish and Northern Equestrian I Jess have. Ash Championship. This is uh, uh, the SNEC's second year, and we're very honoured to be asked for the second year running to host it. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, as you know, we did it, <laughs> and uh, we had a few hiccups. But this year, everything has gone really smoothly, and it's been great. Last year, we ran out over two days, mm -hmm. but this year, I've managed to squeeze it all into one day. one day. Very early start, and we've got a very late finish, but mm -hmm. it's all done in one day. Mm -hmm. Could I just apologise <laughs> to everyone who turned up last year for the first running of the championships at Snake? Because, uh, unfortunately, we at Scottish Northern Equestrian got the dates wrong <laughs> and didn't turn up. So there were no rosettes, no rugs, no anything, and poor cats <laughs> had to carry the whole lot. So apologise to everybody who took part last year and apologise <laughs> apologies to Kaz for leaving her in the lunch. But we've tried to make up for it this year with a bit more it's been about excellent the this year. championships. Yeah. Yes. So what do you see uh, in the future at SNEC? What would you like to oh, do um, for the future? Larger events. Mm -hmm. Like to um, have TV here on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, like to host international events. Um, in, in what disciplines are you thinking? All disciplines. Mm -hmm. we, so dressage? Dressage, show, show jumping, jumping mm -hmm. showing. Mm -hmm. uh, we do an awful lot of training at the centre already. Mm -hmm. I'd like to increase that to include uh, showing training. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some very good trainers both in Scotland and in England. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I like to swap my trainers now and again because not everybody suits a certain type of trainer. Mm -hmm. So if I can offer different trainers for each of the disciplines then mm -hmm. I'm allowing um, access for far more people. But yes, we want to just keep improving on what we, we already do. I am very <laughs> looking forward to phase two of the SNEC's right. progress. Uh -huh. Phase two is hopefully starting next month when I get a cafeteria. Oh, fantastic. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to that. From uh, After the cafeteria, we're looking at expanding the car park. Mm -hmm. um, we also have phase three where we have the horse unit moved down here and have outside arenas. Uh, all weather outside arenas, Fantastic. so I'm looking forward to that. So it's 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 all good. We're expanding, mm -hmm. and we're just slowly but surely getting there. Getting there, absolutely. absolutely. So when do you expect that work to be finished? <gasps> or these facilities to be available, uh, bit mm, by bit, obviously. Well, but yes, it's, it's slowly but surely. Um, I would like to see the completion of phase two in two years' time, mm -hmm. and then in three years' time, hopefully, the start of phase three. Well, that all sounds very good for the future. Thank you very much, Ken. You're welcome, Helen. Thank you.
Blaine. When was it you became chairman? I took over um, my data chairmanship from Anella Cohn um, 18 months ago. Coming 18 up to 18 months. months. Nearly two years, actually, coming up this December. Right. It's amazing how time flies, it's isn't it? It's a couple of years <laughs> and a very fast learning curve. Yeah. So what sort of things have you been doing since becoming chairman? We've been fairly active. In fact, we've been very busy this year, particularly. We have had the Strangles Appeal uh, for an endoscope, which we managed to collect or gather up um, through a lot of generosity from a great many people, £15,000, mm -hmm. to um, get an endoscope, which we ha um, gave to uh, the veterinary college in Edinburgh. The oh, Dick Vett. Yeah, Dick yeah. Vett, which, uh -huh. um, And this is to help uh, go out around the countryside and examine horses so that they're not cross-infecting their own equipment in the veterinary college. So the so local vet can call on that equipment? They can call upon this equipment um, used by the veterinary college, but it means the veterinary college will see horses uh -huh. and will scope them. Otherwise, they had to disinfect everything and then take it back in-house oh, right. and re-disinfect right. and everything else, and they didn't, weren't obviously keen on having infected horses. Scoping. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it's been so very useful from that point of view. And we've, held, we've been involved in the um, Habermar uh, workshop which was held also in May as regards Strangles, a conference with um, international appeal mm -hmm. vets and specialists and scientists from all over the world, America, Holland, mm -hmm. all parts. Mm -hmm. um, also this year we were the um, designated charity for Blair Horse Trials. Oh, yes. yes so we're very good. busy with various competitions. Mm -hmm. and, um, the Riding Club uh, held their style jumping working hunt um, competition which was there, also the BHS working hunter competition. Mm -hmm. So there's been quite a lot going on. Yes, absolutely. You've got a raffle going We've on We've got a too, raffle at the you? moment going yeah. on, yes, there's some wonderful yeah. prizes yeah. coming up, Helena's got for that. Um, there's the triptych, it's been drawn in December, so there are tickets still, still plenty available. of time. Um, plenty of time to buy tickets still. They mm -hmm. have the, uh, the triptych, I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw them last year, the three horses, the three mm -hmm. different pictures of, of horses Beautiful. in various stages. And then yeah. coming up, we've got next, in, Janu in March, we've got our Volunteers Conference happening on the 21st of March next year. All right, where's that taking place? It's being held in Edinburgh at the Hilton Hotel. All um, right. And we're hoping that that should get a lot of volunteers in to see how things are being done and what's happening and what the plans are for the yeah. future. Yeah, because the new so. headquarters is being built, so they'll have the plans of that for people to see. And they'll also have various other... Um, attractions. We hope maybe to have a, a master uh, class or a, a panel. I'm not sure which is happening. Mm -hmm. Something like mm -hmm. So, any plans for the future other than you, you've got your volunteers? But anything else in the, the more distant future? The, the more distant future. Well, again, working with the Veterinary College, um, mm -hmm. the, the Royal Dick is having, uh, it has a 10-year and then 20-year plan, I gather, coming up now of what they're going to be building in the way of accommodation and students' um, uh, accommodation. They're moving the whole school out there, and we, I think we're looking to see what we may be able to do in the future to try and help them, try and right. start something up there. Yeah. Also, laminitis is becoming one of the topics for next mm. year that we're going to be trying to work on and see if we can help some. Yeah. Is that, that going to be linked to obesity or? Uh, obesity yeah. and um, feeding and general mm. welfare of a horse. Yeah. All yeah. Departments. Obesity is the big buzzword at the moment, isn't it? I think it is, it is yeah. at present because there are so many horses that... The, the, the feed merchants have done such a good job at marketing <laughs> yeah. feed Absolutely. and they've made it too easy to buy and the uh, yeah. nutrition so much better. It's, it's, it's like everything that's, you know, you eat, eat less and get twice the result from it. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. But I think, that, I think, having said that, I think this winter, the, with the hay being in shorter supplies, I think yeah. maybe less obesity problems. And hopefully the horses will come through the winter a bit lean and come out <laughs> the other side healthy. We'll see. A bit healthier, I think. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Lorena.
Okay, can we have a big thank you to Debbie Ward, Alison Master Moore and Sue Howard. Thank you very much ladies for coming up and judging for us. Right, without further ado, the winner of the Novice 3, the affiliated section of the Scottish and Northern Equestrian Championships is Terry Graham and Tenno May. Well done, Terry. Thank you very much. And second is Joy McLean on Donna Crescendo. And third is Lauren Tate on Champagne Bubbles. Fourth is Joe Barry on Waratah 4. Here. No? No. So we'll pop that one there. And fifth is Lorraine Young on Starlight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And sixth is Joe Pitt on Estrella.